bedtime books for children. Read by Tardis Nine. Hello, I'm Tardis Nine. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. Now listen, or are you listening? In fact, has there ever been a time when you did not listen to anyone, like your mum or your dad or your teacher? Let me tell you, sometimes not listening to people. Can lead to a lot of trouble. If you don't listen to your teacher, you could end up in trouble at school, and have to stay behind during break time. And if you don't listen to your parents, you could end up in far more greater danger. Thomas didn't listen to Edward's advice once about taking out trucks. And let me just say, he very nearly ran into a lot of trouble. Thomas and the trucks. Thomas used to grumble in the shed at night. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The others didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. "I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow," he said. "If you take them instead, I'll push coaches in the yard." "Thank you," said Thomas. "That will be nice." So they asked their drivers the next morning, and when they said yes, Thomas ran happily to find the trucks. Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. They don't listen to their engine, and when he stops, they bump into each other, screaming, "Oh, oh, oh, oh! Whatever is happening?" And I'm sorry to say, they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling. And when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Beep beep, answered Thomas and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh 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 oh! They screamed as their couplings tightened. Wait, Thomas, wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on! He puffed, and the trucks grumbled slowly out of the siding onto the main line. Thomas was happy. Come along, come along, he puffed. All right, don't fuss. All right, don't fuss. Grumbled the trucks. They clattered through stations and rumbled over bridges. Thomas whistled, peep peep, and they rushed through the tunnel in which Henry had been shut up. Then they came to the top of the hill where Gordon had gotten stuck. Steady now, steady! Warned the driver, and he shut off steam and began to put on the brakes. We're stopping! We're stopping! Called Thomas. No, 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 no! Answered the trucks and bumped into each other. Go on, go on! And before his driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing! Stop pushing! He hissed, but the trucks would not stop. Go on! Go on! They giggled in their silly way. He was glad when they got to the bottom. Then he saw the place where they had to stop. Oh dear! What shall I do? 
they rattled through the station and luckily the line was clear as they swerved into the goods yard. Oh, yeah! groaned Thomas as his brakes held fast and he skidded along the rails. I must stop! And he shut his eyes tight. When he opened them, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. And there watching him was the fat director. What are you doing here, Thomas? He asked sternly. I bought Edward's trucks, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to, I was pushed, said Thomas sadly. Haven't you pulled trucks before? No. Then you have a lot to learn about trucks, little Thomas. They are silly things and must be kept in their place. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. 